We begin tonight at home with a report that could save your life. The Transportation Safety Board is calling for pop-out windows on float planes and life jackets for all float plane passengers. Those are among the findings in the TSB's final report into a float plane crash in 2009 off Saturna Island that killed six people, including an infant. A News reporter Andrew Johnson has more on the safety report and what it means for everyone who flies on float planes. 16 months after the twisted wreckage of a beaver float plane was pulled from Lyle Harbor off Saturna Island, in its final report on the crash, the Transportation Safety Board says it has seen enough. In Canada, from 1989 to 2010, 76 people lost their lives in 109 commercial float plane crashes on water. Many of these were in British Columbia. Six people were killed in Lyle Harbor, including 41-year-old Dr. Carrie Morrissey and her baby daughter, Sarah. Two of the aircraft's doors were jammed, and those who survived the impact were trapped. Float plane passengers must be able to get out quickly and stay afloat till help arrives. The TSB is calling for doors and windows on all float planes to be easy to open in a hurry in the event of a crash. Sydney's Viking Air is the only manufacturer of the pop-out windows the TSB is recommending for Beaver float planes. And the company has also designed a new door latch that mimics the ones we all know how to operate in a car. It's an automotive style latch, so a person would be familiar of, of looking for that type of, type of latch and then actioning it. It's very easy to operate. Viking unveiled the pop-out windows last year, and since then, 14 different operators, including Harbor Air and West Coast Air, have voluntarily installed them. Viking just finished the new latch design, and equipping a plane with both will cost about $7,000. We have done our best to keep the price of the kits as low as we can. The TSB also says passengers should be wearing personal flotation devices at all times during flights. In this case, the industry isn't so sure, fearing life jackets inflated too early could hinder a hasty exit. As an industry, we're, we're not confident that all of the risks and hazards have been identified. Transport Canada says it will review the report and provide a response within 90 days. Critics point out the TSB has recommended life jackets be worn by passengers several times before, as far back as 1994. Many crashes and many lives later, they remain tucked under the seat during most float plane flights. Andrew joins us now with more. Andrew, a lot of people watching tonight make that float plane trip to the mainland many times and are very interested in this. Now, you've, you've mentioned that the TSB has made similar recommendations before with no success. Uh, does the Safety Board have any reason to think that its concerns this time will, will lead to new regulations? Well, as the TSB says, in general, it is very successful in persuading Transport Canada to adopt its recommendations. But TSB officials say sometimes it takes one more accident to be the catalyst for change. And they believe the Saturna crash could be that accident. The TSB says it is encouraged that two BC-based operators require passengers to wear personal flotation devices right now. They are Air Cab, based out of Coal Harbor, and Bella Coola Air. All right, Andrew Johnson, thank you. You're welcome.